So in this project, I wanted to build something about a stair that I made previously. But looking at the stair on its own, it doesn't really spark the imagination that much, does it? So that's why I thought, why not design a whole house that's around the stair? So we have this as a center space, as a central space. And we have everything else that's flowing around it. How cool would that be to have a house around a beautiful feature stair? So initially I had a very quick sketch, which you saw way, way out there in the beginning, because this is super duper fast. So I don't show you two hours or two days worth of work. But initially there was an idea that we have the stair in the middle and then we're separating the space in such a way that we have the kitchen and the dining area on one side. And then we have the living area on the other side there. And that's what we're seeing now here is just trying to block this out to work it and start with really rough details initially and then add more and more detail until we get to the idea to the concept that we really want to show here because to me all aspects in regards to tools are about exactly this it's thinking about a space putting a human inside or multiple humans and understanding how that space works in relationship to those people how do we enhance that space and make it work as beautifully and efficiently as possible and if you have a really beautiful stair that allows you to focus your space in such an interesting way and maybe frames your view to really nice outdoor garden views then all the better so that's what's happening here we have once again in the center a stair which you can see now how easily it is to modify it and then we have on one side the kitchen which has its ceiling which is still pretty high and then the living area and then this is going to be a really beautiful double height space you enter from one side you can see through this kind of transparent wooden stair onto the other side of the house and of course really beautiful windows that are framing the view to the garden that's sitting out there so notice the ease of use of adjusting this stair here which is created with vertex groups and being able to move all these planes around to quickly and beautifully get a nice looking stair which is the point of this right so we've got this thing that we can really easily modify and edit so we're not focused too much on the technicalities but we're focusing on how we want this to sit inside of our house and how we want to frame the views that we're building out so of course talking about views we definitely need some windows which we're doing really quickly here with some boolean boxes to be able to reduce and open up reduce the solidity and open up the space to the outside so now thinking about that double height space what does it look like maybe we can make it slightly asymmetrical which starts to frame the view that we have underneath of the house how we have one side is slightly pushed back with the idea that we have an outdoor deck there that's covered so it can be used even when it's raining i absolutely love being out in the rain and being covered and just observing and watching and hearing the rain pour so that's what i was thinking when i was creating this kind of space here so now it's really about massaging that space a little bit more and starting to think about how we even frame this within a garden it's definitely going to have its own kind of garden uh and in this case i'm putting a wall all around it not because i love walls so much or high fencing but because in this case we don't want to spend too much time modeling the context which could be really anywhere along a mountain or with many other houses but what we want to do is think about what is the fastest way to sell our vision to show the narrative that we want so what's the narrative once again it's about having this beautiful stair and the house framed around it including the garden so we're going to look at the garden which is going to be composed of a lot of lush greenery right so you have this strong relationship between the inside of the space and the outside of the space that's really the point here it's how we can engage with the outdoor and really feel like you're not living in some kind of urban jungle with the exact opposite where you're living in some kind of really beautiful environment so i'm using a lot of beautiful add-ons that are available in blender for free right now this is called the jarc this add-on which allows you to create parametric floors many other things but right now i'm using it for flooring so instead of just having a texture floor it always looks a bit better when we have 
actual geometry because we can add a little bit more variation we can play with the height we can play with the length with the width with all these kinds of elements that the eye catches or the light catches in a specific way and they illuminate the space they illustrate the space a little bit better and that's the point here it's how do we illustrate this in a way where of course we have the stair but it's not only the stair right the stair sits in an environment and that environment is a beautiful house which is actually set to scale with some real life material references like wood flooring for example so now thinking about our hero shot here which is that perspective from somewhere where we're going to have our entrance point let's start to build up the garden and what we're going to be able to see out from here and again it's going to be very lush and very covered with either shrubs or trees or actually both and the reason why we want to do that is because we also want to cover the horizon point so we don't need to worry about modeling into infinity of the context it would be great to have a lot more of the context but our focus here is really about the interior of the space and how the interior frames this beautiful external lush garden so that's what we're working on here so first we created some shrubs to go around of course everything is with geometry nodes and now we're creating this plane on which we're going to distribute points and those points are going to be referencing collection of two trees the trees and the shrubs they come from polygonic which is a great add-on i use it all the time for greenery for flushness it seems to be a pretty good balance of having greenery that has high enough detail with low enough poly so i love using those assets and i use them quite a bit we're nearly getting there with regards to what we see out in the outside so the next thing we're doing is building out the fence in a little bit more detail with geometry nodes it's going to be quite simple we have got uh, two decks wooden decks and they are sitting in a way that's aligned to the landscape so the quickest way to do that is with a raycast node in geometry nodes and then we array it around we do that with specific points and then we're using those points to lift out and we're continuing to refine that idea here with the fencing and making sure that things are aligning correctly which even for me takes a little bit of time to understand appropriately in geometry nodes but once we do we move the things as they should be and then we have a, this magical fence and and of course the beautiful thing about geometry nodes is that if we're careful of how we build our elements we should be able to reduce them fairly easily so i wouldn't have to create this kind of fence again or if i do it's very easy and straightforward enough that we can just keep doing it it's time to do a test render just to see how things are going and whether we have things framed in the right way so it's always a good idea to save and then i go into crit and really quickly sketch things out could do it on an ipad but i recently found not recently i have found that it's much quicker to work on one device they have to go on cloud drives and things like that to move things so here i'm just putting very simple notes about window framings about how we make that stair even more refined about adding all these extra bits of details maybe pushing this bit out the landing of the stair adding kitchen cabinets on the top just very straightforward and simple notes and then thinking about our handrail and how can that be an extension of the other elements so first off we need to adjust our stair a little bit here and that has to do with moving some of these planes around to get them into the right position and then orienting some of the other elements so next on we're moving with the windows and they're pretty straightforward we start out with planes and the easiest way to do it is because we already have the exact sizes which come from the boolean boxes is to use those boolean boxes subdivide them a couple of times so we have separate windows position them in the right place more or less isolate then everything and then start to assign materials and then inset right so that's the very quick way to do it of course there's one limitation of that which is that at the external ramp is a little bit thinner than the middle ramps which in reality if you look at the windows around your house that's not the case but that's okay because we're not aiming to achieve complete realism here we're only aiming to achieve enough 
for us to understand what our story is and how we're framing the home and how all of those elements help. So, of course, a little bit more realism does help. But is that the best place to be spending our time and effort? Or is it somewhere else, like, which is of adding more elements and refining more of the stair bits? Let's add materials for glass. And that's a very simple material. Just the principle BSDF with transmission turned to nearly 1. And lowering down the refraction rate to something like 1.1. Next up, it's about the stairs and adding a little bit more detail and trying to figure out how we can position these and how we can unwrap them as easily as possible so we have a material that looks less stretched. Once we're done with that, then it's time to move on with the kitchen and adding that extra level of refinement by adding up the kitchen cabinets, putting that baseboard around so it feels a bit more realistic, subdividing and then adding cabinets with inset tools so not too different than the way we were doing the windows except this time the middle bit comes out instead of the edge bit coming out then extruding all the other elements a little bit and creating a countertop that we can use and then we have this beautiful island there and again just thinking about the overall composition and what we can enhance so the space is pretty big this is not a small space but it's the kind of space that can do a justice to this type of stair so we need to fill it up with things and sketchfab is one add-on that i find quite useful to be able to get a lot of online assets now the only iffy bit with sketchfab is that sometimes things coming at the wrong scale or the wrong position there isn't that kind of security check onto it so it does take a little bit of more time but if you have some unique items that you're looking for like piano it's the best place to get them so continuing with our beautiful refinement here and just keep adding more and more details so one of my favorite add-ons that i use is interior essentials because it's a fairly decent library i do wish there were some more variations on the couches non-velvety things and for the most part it's excellent and i do use it quite a lot and it's the perfect thing to start adding a little bit more pieces and things around now this table i've got from geometry nodes uh, it's a setup which makes it much faster with a lot of things that happen on top of it and this island is an appropriate size with a kind of very generous space that we're dealing with here so let's create a very dumb duplicate of our stools and now thinking about the upper part of the kitchen cabinets so we duplicate the bottom part we isolate only one side because we have on the right hand side windows so we probably wouldn't be putting cabinets over the windows and then it's just adjusting them moving them to kind of build down leaving about you know half a meters space between the countertop and the top cabinets and refinement 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 i mean from this point on we have really the basic setup and it's really starting to feel like the kind of space that almost built around this beautiful stair can it be more incorporated within more of the elements definitely but for right now for the limited time that i've had to produce this i feel like the space is doing this stair to justice which is a little bit odd when you think about it isn't it should be the other way around like the justice of the stairs to the space instead of one way or another anyways it does work pretty well so at this point i duplicated some of the stairs i think some of the video got lost or i forgot to record or pause it or it got some kind of error so you didn't see a little bit of this part for which i do apologize but this is showing a good overview i was struggling to think of how to customize the steps a little bit more what i came up with is duplicating the steps and having half of the width so then we can use one part of the width that does what the stairs need to do to be supported which is one part goes down the other part goes up and then we have the second bits of the steps which create the handrails on one side and they create these kind of decorative very small shelves on the other side of the steps continuing on with adding a lot more detail here we've got more elements coming in from interior essentials like art paintings all these kinds of elements doors very important for the up we're not going to worry about modeling the bedrooms because we won't see them that's not the point the point here is really about the stairs and always going back to our reference 
image reference shot and seeing what can be seen from there because that's how we model and that's how we kind of organize our whole scene is from what we can see because we don't want to spend too much time modeling things that don't enhance our story from the image don't enhance that composition so more elements from interior essentials it's just whatever it's easier to grab around and add that extra level of realism and detail not really realism because we're not going for to realism here we're going for having a good sense that this is a home that's being lived in and how do we do that it's by adding all these extra bits and bobs that are sitting around that enhance that sense of a home otherwise it's a dry house uh, almost like something that architects can definitely imagine perhaps or i hope they certainly can if that's their own creation in this case it's my creation so even without any of the interior elements i can sense how the space would work and what works well in what area so now we enhance that a lot more a lot further by adding all these extra bits cups cutlery ovens you name it right so chairs the barcelona chair are classic who doesn't want to see that maybe it's almost too much and then always going back to our reference point seeing what we're missing there where do we have like a big gap space big empty space if you look around your own house or if you look around any house you barely have a lot of empty space right it's usually filled with stuff i'm not saying it's great to fill every single area with elements but it's definitely a good idea to have as many elements as possible around so that includes a lot of decorations right so we have the architecture then we have the interior design and then we have decorations so those are art plants pottery rugs all kinds of different things that help enhance the sense of space of how big it is of, and that really helps a lot of people imagine how it feels to be inside of that space so in here again we have a lot of space so we put a piano this time we went with a slightly smaller setup of a piano that came from sketchfab compared to the one we were looking at before now i think it's quite important to have some books around as reference uh, you would usually have these big like tom dixon books you know in these kinds of spaces or like interiors or art or architecture you know they're coffee table books right that's what they're called and then planting i think that's really important to have in a space greenery we have plenty of lushness outside probably a bit too much i have a garden right now at the house that we live in and i can't really imagine having as much gardening as you would have in this house in this garden because that's actually a lot of work but clearly if you're the kind of person that can afford to live in this kind of space you can probably afford to have a gardener come and tidy up the space around for you so back to the interior elements now so that space underneath the stairs it's a bit of a strange space we don't want to fill it up with too many things at the same time we don't want to have it empty because when we look at our reference shot to the left over there it looks really empty so why not fill it up with some more plants i think there's something that people always love to see they give a good reference and they're not competing really with the architecture because there's something quite different the only element that could be slightly competing are the geometrical boxes the planters which they sit on and i did do a second version for my patrons and for gumroad where I can't really share these assets that come from these paid libraries. So I did it with items that come from Creative Commons libraries, uh, mainly Sketchfab. So there is a second version of this, which you can check out in the links below if you're interested in, or you become my patron and you can grab it along with many other things. And now back to this, we keep adding carpets, rugs, whatever you call them in your country. Uh, we add light pendants. Uh, we find all these kinds of elements that really enhance the space uh, we have this double height space and i think track lighting would be perfect with a bit more detail we could even incorporate it into the edge so you have this black edge around but in this case i went around with something that's fairly straightforward and simple and have these track lights that are attached to the wall edge so not the bottom not the ceiling edge but the wall edge of it so they're side attached instead of top attached 
and then we have these tracks so it's quite nice because that would give a lot of light without having to put too many light pictures on top and now that i'm thinking about it retrospectively they're slightly randomly positioned but perhaps every second one could be pointing up so we wouldn't need any more lights on top we could benefit from some kind of interesting chandelier on top of the stair now that i'm again thinking about it retrospectively but this is doing a pretty good job so time for another test render i looked around and i saw that i had these old umbrellas in there so we're gonna get rid of them very shortly perhaps that's coming out a little bit later but it's really thinking about now the composition there they are i was wondering what they were for quite a few minutes and i thought they were reflections at first and now it's also time to put some more modern people these are 3d people a lot of the libraries they have free samples of really high quality 3d people even if they're not blender people you can get fbx or obj's which you can import into blender x o i o Xoyo, I, I don't know how it's pronounced, but that's one of the companies. AXYZ is another one. Uh, Gobo, Gobo Tree, or just Gobo, I'm not sure what they're called, is another one. And Humano. So these companies, they're the big players in regards to 3D people. And you can go to their respective websites and you can download some free 3D people. Of course, there are also quite a few low poly people from Sketchfab, which is where I grabbed a lot of those so then going back and just doing more render tests this feel like the kind of space that i can imagine myself with with the staircase being the front of everything or do we need to work out a little bit more can i imagine this is my home i think that's the question that most people ask themselves about is like is that the kind of home where i can picture myself with and you have to think about that very carefully right what is the kind of home you can picture yourself with sure fancy homes come with big garages and big spaces and you know you see all the fancy cars that are parked on in front but that's not it it's scalability relationship to the body to people and we get that sense of scale from objects inside it's really straightforward and simple for example when i'm designing bedrooms you have to have a bed you can't design a bedroom without a bed you can't design a kitchen without kitchen cabinets and perhaps an island or some other quick place to eat you can't design a living space without some furniture like couches and you can't design a deck without some deck furniture so all of those elements when we see them in the pictures it's not that we really love putting them i would much rather find and model much better models for example of the furniture of these um, kind of bronze boxes but it's better than not having anything in there and it definitely helps with giving more proportion of the space so we rendered out now we're in affinity photo post-processing the image i used to be the kind of person that never post-processed my images i was like mm, i can do everything in blender but as of recently i post-process every single image because there are very subtle enhancements that can be made that can really pop the images out and with very little very minimal amount of work we enhance the images significantly and then after looking at an image for a while we always have to go back because there's some tweaks maybe some elements are intersecting or i noticed that that girl model wasn't working too well the scale not the scale but the texture of the, her shirt was very different and a bit odd so i decided to put her outside put one of the children on the couch here maybe they're looking at a friend or it's a mystery we don't know what happens to the left of the image right there could be a tv there could be a lot of things and then thinking about positioning the lady and the human if you can see him the man somewhere where they have direct eye contact it starts to build up a story right of maybe there's the child who's talking with somebody it could be a sibling it could be somebody else and then there's the lady who's looking at somebody who is she looking at and so that starts to create that story of maybe a family that has multiple people living inside um, many children or a friend or an uncle or somebody else that's looking after the space so we're pretty much to the end here and it's going quite well but the main point is really to show you that we can really design around a specific element that we really like i love this there 
I really love that I spent the time to create it. And I really love that I'm giving it to you guys as well. Well, you have to pay for it a little bit for my efforts, but hopefully you now can understand a little bit more of how we can frame a space and modify even pre-made, pre-bought assets to something that attaches and gives the whole space a meaning in one way or another. And I think stairs are an excellent reason for that. And there's plenty of resources. You can look at them in the description of how this stair generator is built. You can buy the file again or you can purchase it on Patreon. So thank you very much for listening all the way through and for following through. So if you're interested in more of these kinds of narrated time lapses, do let me know. I keep experimenting a lot recently, if you haven't noticed, with different formats. So I'm quite curious of what your feedback could be or what kind of content you would like to see more of and of course we have courses that they're being sold as well so check them out there in the bottom thank you for watching see you next time